Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dr. Buck again. Uh, this. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dr. Buck again, and in this video, I am going to go over how to stop the bleeding. Christy asked this question uh, on my Facebook page. What happens if she gets bit by a shark in the middle of nowhere and she's got no instruments or tourniquets or anything like that? How can she stop the bleeding? So we'll go over that today in this little short video for you. Hey, I also wanted to say thank you to everybody who is commenting and questioning or putting comments and questions on my Facebook page and uh, the YouTube channel. That is pretty cool. Um, and thanks for the suggestions and all that stuff. If you have subscribed, thank you for that. If you haven't, what the F? Subscribe somewhere, wherever you're supposed to do it. Share it with your friends if you want, if you think it's cool. If you don't think it's cool, whatever. Tell me I'm dumb. I don't care. Anyway, all right, let's do it. So first of all, there's one equation you need to know to stop the bleeding, and that is uh, force over area equals pressure. And I know everybody totally remembers physics class in college like I do, um, but that's the only formula you need to know to stop bleeding because that means the uh, force over a certain area equals more pressure. So the lower the, that, what the, what the equation really means is the lower the area, the smaller the area, with the same force equals greater pressure. So that means if I take like a big towel, it's like somebody's bleeding in their, on their hand, right, or, or they cut their hand across here, right, cut their hand across here like this, like that, and I take a big towel and put it on the hand, then that's a big area with some, maybe you're putting a lot of a force on there, but the pressure is not very much on that, on that area that's cut, and it's, it's not going to stop the bleeding, so you just keep bleeding. Because plus the hand is like very vascular, and it's going to bleed like crazy. I always do. So if I make the area smaller with, say, something like my finger, which you are always carrying with, most people are carrying a finger with them. So even if you're swimming or like in the jungle, you always have fingers. So this is what you can do. You take your finger and you put it on the bleeder. It's very simple. So <laughs> there are a couple caveats. So if you see the place that it's bleeding, okay, and it's a small bleeder, uh, it's just one spot, then you can put your finger on it and push hard, okay? And that will overcome the pressure of the, of the heart, essentially pushing the blood out, right? And you can overcome that force. Um, say if somebody put, they cut their arm here like this, all right? And actually, I should put it, well, honestly, this is, this is like the classic thing right here. Somebody, you get mad and you punch your arm through a window. We see this all the time. And this big, huge piece of glass cuts all these arteries, nerves, and muscles and stuff like that there. Um, and these guys come in with the radial artery. With the, the radial artery is here. Okay. And it goes about like that. And the ulnar artery is over here somewhere. Okay. Oops. And these are kind of, we, I put them right here because these are, they're really close to the skin right here. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later too. But so if they, they cut here, we have the ulnar artery and the uh, radial artery in here somewhere, and they're usually bleeding. And um, a lot of times the paramedics or something will come in with a big wrap on it, and they're still bleeding, still bleeding. <clears throat> a lot, well, recently they've been putting a tourniquet on, which is fine too. But you don't necessarily always need to do, put a tourniquet on um, if something is, you know, a limb is bleeding like that. Um, you, you can basically put your fingers on where you think the arteries are and overcome that pressure as well. And there's, I'll talk about where the arteries are close to the skin in a sec. But say, say if it's a superficial bleeder, okay, like it's not very deep and it's just maybe some skin there, you can, you can put your, your finger on in proximal, okay, to the the cut, and then distal to the cut. So this is proximal, we call proximal closer to the heart, and then distal is farther away. So the, the tips of my fingers are more distal than my uh, wrist, okay, does that make sense? Anyway, so you can put pressure here, and then, because this is the artery, the artery is going from the heart away, right, and that, 
So it's going to be on this side. And then the vein is on the other side. They're coming back to the heart, so they're going to be on this side. Okay. So they're, you're going to go there and there, something like that. Okay. That's a, that's a short version of what's really happening. Uh, there's some other stuff going on, but, but those two things you can do, and you can put with a very small area of, of your finger, you can usually put a lot of pressure, and you can pr most of the time stop that. Most of the time st stop that bleeding. So what, <clears throat> what I do and what <laughs> I had happen like not too long ago, it was a few months ago, I'm like a fool, right? I walk in there, and uh, they, have the, they have the arm out, and the guy's you know, got a big cut there, and um, they said, oh, it was squirting blood. Well, like, you know, I was like, yeah, it's probably not squirting blood. What are you talking about? So I walk in there, I take the um, dressing off, and uh, the guy's got his arm out like this, and I, and I, plop, I pluck the dressing off like this, and it goes whoosh, right in my effing eye. I was like, oh my God, I'm an idiot. So uh, that's uh, another video that you're supposed to wear, like, you know, glasses and things like that when you're dealing with blood. But uh, it didn't get actually in my eye. It hit just right there. Not right here. Right there. Almost in my friggin' eye. So anyway, um, I then put my finger right proximal to the bleeder and it completely stopped. Um, I took it off and it squirted, I, I took it off like this, and it squirted across the room and I put my finger back on uh, the bleeder. So you can do that. And then uh, we're gonna take him to the operating room so we put a, a tourniquet back on him and we got, got him back up there. So it's a little bit easier. You know, if you put your finger on, you can hold it forever, but at some point your finger is going to go numb and it's a real pain like walking with the patient when they're, you know, in the stretcher. Or, you know, if you're in the back country or if you're um, in the jungle or something like that, you, you're not going to take this patient out or this person out with your finger on the, uh, on the bleeder like that. It's kind of cumbersome. So um, if you can do something else to, to stop it, which is, you know, uh, you can put like a tourniquet if you have a, like one of those little uh, military tourniquets and they're really actually good, work really well. You can put it proximal. And um, I guess that brings me to another point is the, is the tourniquets. And the tourniquets we used to say, no, you shouldn't use the tourniquets at all. And now uh, we're kind of using them a lot more. And the reason is because, uh, you know, you, you, the, the muscle can live quite a long time. Um, without any blood flow. We generally say it, about four to six hours, it, it'll be okay. And after about four to six hours, generally about six hours, um, then you start getting concerned for muscle dying and, and stuff like that. So if your tourniquet is going to be a short-lived kind of thing, then that's, that's okay. Um, if it's going to be longer, then you want to release the tourniquet for periods of time, um, at least 20 minutes or so. And at that time, you could maybe hold your finger on uh, the bleeder or something like that to to get blood flow to the rest of the uh, tissue and muscle and all this stuff. So, um, is that what I'll, I want to talk about? Uh, oh, the other thing I want to say is where the arteries are close to the skin. So these are points that you can hold pressure and uh, just with one or two fingers and completely occlude the artery to the limb. Okay, so that's those are the two places I I showed you right there: artery, uh, the ulnar and um, radial arteries right there, um, you know, that's to the hand. You can pretty much uh, almost occlude the whole thing. Um, the hand will not stop, totally stop bleeding, but it'll be pretty good. Um, if the arteries are bleeding out of the wrist, you can hold just proximal to that, and that wrote, works pretty good. I've done that. Um, the, other, the other place is the brachial artery, which is, is kind of like if you feel your bone right here, it's just above that. Sometimes you can get to that in some people, and in, in some people that are really thin, you can see it actually beating if you look close. But sometimes you can get to that, and you can hold pressure on that right there, and that'll uh, stop the bleeding, stop well, at least the arterial bleeding to the entire rest of the limb. Um, and then, of course, the neck. <laughs> You don't want to do this though. If you hold too much pressure for too long on both sides, you just like, they just pass out. It's a good trick though. Uh, and then the other one is in the groin. And for the same thing, if for really thin people, you can see, or you generally can't see the artery beating, but you could, you put your uh, finger there and you can feel that it's just under the ligament. There's kind of a hard-ish thing going across from, uh, you know, when you look at somebody, they have almost like a, a V shape from their hip bone down to the crotch, and that's the inguinal ligament, and it's just below that. You can generally feel 
the femoral artery there. Um, and sometimes you can even uh, hold pressure on the femoral artery and at least slow down the bleeding to the to the to the uh, leg. Um, so that's a pretty good. So actually, we used to do that uh, when I was a resident in cardiothoracic surgery. They put these big, huge hoses up people uh, in the femoral artery for uh, their surgery, and we used to. Our job was to pull them out, and it was kind of neat because you'd pull it out, and then like you'd let it, you'd let it uh, bleed because you wanted to make sure the clot came out. And so you'd squirt the thing, like hit the ceiling, and then you put, you'd hold pressure on it, and you'd hold pressure with like two fingers, um, for you know ten minutes uh, at least, and then uh, usually it was okay. So it's quite interesting. Oh, that's a trauma going off right now. Look at that. All right, well that wraps it up. Anyway, uh, I think that's about it. So subscribe or share my uh, the videos if you if you like them. Uh, thanks for watching again, and we'll talk to you next time.